Definitely, my let's phone's do it. literally not on me. I can go grab. I'll go grab my yeah. phone. Yeah, Wait, sure. this is so exciting. We should definitely make a group chat and get it going. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Can you play the drums? I can. Yeah. We're trying to learn. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you can count to four, you can kind of do it. Okay. My mom called me like four times. <laughs> His phone's dead. So. Classy. Okay. No worries. Can we hug? Yeah. No sure, worries. Yeah. 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 Nice to meet you. If I'm sweating or something. Oh, yeah. how old are they, dude? My mom called me killer move right there. What? <clears throat> okay, what? 21 plus since they said they were now sober. What do you mean? You think only 21 year olds uh, fucking drink alcohol, bro? What are you crazy? Okay. There was some other shit I wanted to watch. Oh, the mortician one. From yesterday. The mortician talks. Talks about like dead bodies or something. No, no, no. We're going to do the dad thing in a second. And we're going to do the fucking uh, 90 Day Fiance. I don't, I don't know if we'll talk about that. them all, but I got all sorts of fun blood draining devices and this one is for closing mouths kind of cool hi i'm victor m sweeney and i'm a light bro why does he literally look like a mortician that's so weird like he just like what's up with the vibes dude even if his name is sweeney like sweeney todd licensed funeral director and more wait what hi i'm victor m sweeney and i'm a victor m sweeney at your service madam if you need uh, mortician's work i will write the obituary for you oh your husband is alive you say well haha <laughs> i'll take care of that after all i'm victor m sweeney licensed funeral director and mortician and this is Mortician support. This is a question from St. Severin. Question for morticians. When someone dies, do you remove their poo? Or are we all buried with an unpooed poo? That is such a good question. More often than not- Oh my God, dude. Look at how excited he got to talk about removing poop from a dead person's body. Oh God, this is a perfect Your mortician. Poo is up to you. Sometimes you, you hear the myth that everybody uh, poos themselves before they die. That's not always the case. Sometimes it is. For my purposes, when I get someone back- Bro, that question literally sounds like someone in the chat wrote it, by the way. This is the, the dumbass things that some people in the chat say. The funeral home and I'm preparing them. Um, if they have pooed, then I'll clean them up. If it's the case that they start pooing when pressure starts to build up in the abdomen, then I stop what I'm doing, I clean them up. Typically what I'll do is, is I'll actually flush out the bowels with the hose. Because the ah! last thing you want to have happen is someone to start pooing, and then to continue doing it when you can't control it. Jaded never won. Ah! I can't eat while this is- uh, Dude, oh my god, I can't do this. I can't eat while this is playing. Dude, this shit is so weird. Oh, it's so undignified, dude. I mean, you're dead, so who gives a fuck? Why did I click on this while I'm eating, dude? Oh, la, 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 la. If a person we're in context dies, does the mortician take them out? Shower thoughts. Yes. Historically, I have always removed contact lenses because one of the things that we need to do, of course, uh, is what we call set the features. Setting the features would mean that we close the mouth and we also need to close their eyes. So we actually have a device that helps us do this. These are called eye caps. They're essentially spiky contact lenses that fit over the eyes and will actually grip the eyelid when we pull it down over those little burrs there. I typically remove contact lenses um, because those just get in the way of me doing what I need to do to set their features and, and provide a, a decent appearance for the family. Question from Lainey. Will my cat eat me when I die? Possibly? Hopefully? I think the short answer to that is yes. <laughs> I've heard of that happening from colleagues of mine. And as we all know, cats being inferior to dogs, they will do anything. They are opportunists. The question from Vamp yes! Florence. How do morticians not want to chug the embalming fluid? 
Based. Okay, never mind. I'm on board. Queenie, you can fucking dude. That it. That that sets up. This would be a wonderful, like a mortician would be a wonderful horror uh uh villain, dude. Like so many tools and shit that you can use. I, I mean, I'm sure they it has been done already. It's probably a trope or something. But um, I don't watch a lot of horror movies, so don't make fun of me. But I feel like I, I feel like he could, uh, you know, he is like, even if it's been done before, I don't know if, I, if they've ever like used the actual mortician tools as weapons or as like, uh, you know, twisted things that he tortures his victims with. But I feel like that would be fucking sick. Like that would make a great villain. Oh God. Annoying fucking cat Andy's in here losing their fucking minds. Possibly because they have toxic plasmosis or whatever the fuck it's called. And their cats are now controlling their brains. Honestly, I, I believe that. I think cats literally fucking control human brains. Because every cat owner fucking are, are, are defined by the ownership of a cat. Or rather, sorry, the cat owns them, obviously. So, like, they, they have no chill. They have zero chill. Look at this. They're worse than anime, dude. They're worse than fucking annoying. They are worse than annoying fucking weebs, dude. How, how can you be more annoying than perhaps the most annoying group of fans on the internet? Stop it. Be normal. These look like they taste like Fruit Loops. Well, I really love the picture you have, and I noticed you forgot the blue flavor. Embalming fluid is really colorful, but I can assure you it is not tasty. It smells awful. As far as the coloring goes, it is strange, isn't it? One of the reasons that a lot of these fluids are, are maybe red or other colors is so that the embalmer knows what they are without having to maybe read the label. But you'll also notice that a couple of them are red. When we push the blood out of the body in arterial embalming, we're pushing out a red fluid. So ideally, we want to put a red fluid back in. So we gain access to an artery. Uh, typically, we'll make an incision maybe in the neck or in the thigh. And then we'll also gain access to a vein. We open the artery. We are going to have an embalming machine, which acts as a pump. And we're going to use this arterial tube, something like this. So this goes down the artery, and then it's going to pump fluid through. Now your vein, we are going to open with either a large forceps or this device called a drain tube. So this goes down the vein, and then when we open it, the blood will pour out the side of our device here. And then we can control how quickly or how slowly we want the blood to leave the body. When we have a, a deceased loved one, they're going to look very, very pale because the blood has stopped circulating. So when we put in the, the red blood, the, the red fluid rather, that's actually gonna pink them up in some ways and make them look a little bit more alive. Right. Motherfucker said red blood, dude, you hear that? On accident, he said red blood, dude. Yo, this is literally, he's a villain. I, I, I mean, they, look, they're providing an important service, don't get me wrong. But like, God damn, dude, it's hard to fucking, I don't know, um, anyway. Another important service that I provide is telling you that you can avoid ads at the top of the hour that I run. It's a one minute ad break. Of course, you could just sit through it or you can subscribe. You could do it for a $5 subscription or you can use a free Twitch Prime subscription to avoid the ad break at the top of every hour. Here it is. Yeah, that was a decent segue. It was like a six out of 10. This is a question from Clementine. Okay, full disclosure, I'm fat and this is a legit question. I'm not trying to be fat phobic, but how do extremely obese people, like I'm talking 400 plus pounds, fit in a coffin? Do they make a plus size coffin? Ah. Or does a mortician like cut fat out of them and sew them back up? You can answer the second part of that question first. No, we do not remove fat and, and sew someone back up. Everybody is buried intact if we can at all help it. So we actually have caskets that are, are made by our manufacturer to be oversized. Typically, when someone passes away, if they're larger, we'll measure them at their elbows because those tend to be the parts that stick out the furthest and then determine what width of casket we will need um, to give them a, a more comfortable appearance. C for Chase. Do morticians put chapstick on the bodies or are they just sitting there? Casket open, 
lips cracked out. That's actually a great concern of ours, is drying out. Not just the lips, but after you die, of course, your body is not producing any oils, so your skin can get quite dry. We actually have a, like a heavy face cream that we use on almost everybody that comes through in the interim between when they're embalmed and when we get them ready for their funeral and put their makeup on if we need it. We always have that heavy face cream on to make sure that their lips don't dry out. So as far as chapstick goes, I've never put chapstick on a body, but if someone really wanted me to, I, I guess I, I wouldn't say no. Here's a question from Coco. Now I'm going on Google looking up the weirdest stuff what do dead bodies smell like? Dead bodies smell awful. Rotting anything smells awful. We are hardwired to think that dead human bodies smell bad. And it's a smell you never forget. I myself, I went out to a nice restaurant to have some aged steak and I couldn't do it. I love this username. This is a question from Future what? Corpse. Aren't we all? What do Ugh. morticians do with- Is he saying it's similar? That's terrible. Why did he say that? I'm... You missed the username? Oh my god, that's fucked me up, dude. That fucked me up. C for Chase? No. Here's a question from Coco. Coco? Court8311, what's the username? What's the problem with that? Space Invader, Future Corpse! Um, future corpse. What the like. fuck? Dead bodies smell awful. Rotting anything smells awful. We are hardwired to think that dead human bodies smell bad. And it's a smell you never forget. I myself, I went out to a nice restaurant to have some aged steak and I couldn't do it. I love this username. This is a question from Future Corpse, aren't we all? What do morticians do with our organs after an embalming? What happens when they aren't donated? When we do embalming, all your organs just stay inside your body. We can prepare them all internally. After we finish the arterial embalming, we have what's called the cavity embalming. Optimally, with the cavity embalming, you're trying to puncture the lungs, the heart, the intestines, the stomach, and then you're also gonna try to shoot for the kidneys too. We actually use what's called a trocar, and I, I have one here. It's a hollow point spear, essentially, and it hooks up to what we call an aspirator. So it's a, it's a vacuum, essentially. Insert this in the abdomen and then try to puncture all the hollow organs. And then the vacuum will actually draw out all those nasty fluids. If you donate your organs, typically organ donations are handled by uh, organ harvesting companies. And they will actually work with a hospital or- The Democratic Party! <laughs> Sorry with me to transport a body where it needs to go and then they'll harvest the organs donate them where they need to and then the body will be returned to me after that whole process is done question from paul matthews do morticians normally just drain the blood down the sink the short answer is yes all of our oh. bodily wastes are disposed just like our normal bodily wastes the sewer system that goes right to the uh, water treatment plant this is a question from soggy emma why are coffins so expensive y'all just bury me raw. Well, Soggy Emma, that is uh, definitely an option. You can be buried in the ground without a casket. A lot of funeral homes uh, put substantial markups on their casket. And I think it's just a way to collect money on, on the tail end of a service, but just like a furniture store, which would maybe mark up their uh, kitchen tables four times what they actually cost. I would guess that most caskets are marked up probably one and a half to two times what the wholesale cost is. This is a question from Tiny Rain. Do morticians put a bra on you? If so, I would like my rotting corpse to not wear a bra and would like my ghost to be wandering braless with poking nips. Well, Tiny Rain, I don't know if there's much I can do about poking nips, but we do put bras on if the family requests. And the reality is I've probably put on more bras than I have taken off in my life. Did that answer your question? <laughs> This is a question from Leonard de Montague. Dude, he's so unsettling, dude. He's like way too, I mean, listen, it's probably a good thing because he's like confident in what he does and he like, I don't know, does he like his job? Is that a good thing to like your job if you're a mortician? It seems like he's doing what he loves, which is fucking sucking out the bodily fluids and remains out of a human being that you once loved that was alive. 
Oh my god, chat. It, it just those who are simping currently are just basically doing one big self report. You're simping because you think he's attractive. Okay? Like you literally think he's cute. That's why you're simping. It's just come on. Does a mortician feel just as sad as a normal person when someone close to them dies? The short answer of that is yes. That was one of the things, actually, I myself really worried about when I got into this profession. Because at a certain point, when you see a dead body, you almost always kind of go into work mode. What can I do to help this family? What can I do to prepare this body? So I was very concerned when I started doing this that maybe I would start to even think of my own loved ones as something to help or something to fix and not really take in grief like it's a necessary job dude i know i know i know i know i know oh wait this isn't the one who this isn't the fucking guy who uh was was talking about how like um carving up dead bodies makes him hungry i had um uh, one of my og fans is a mortician i don't know what she ever happened uh i don't know what happened to her um but she used to like you guys remember? Like, uh, old heads remember. What, she ever happened? Yeah, okay, my brain is a little fried. Shut up. Like I used to. For my own family, for loved ones, um, my own grandpa passed away just a few months ago, and I feel just as sad about that as I, I think I ever would. It's just a matter of, of perspective and maybe where you're at at the moment. Question from T. What foundation do funeral directors use to make dead people look alive? Well, that's a good question. All the makeup we use is actually formulated for dead people. So it's made to go on cold skin as opposed to warm skin like regular makeup. And oh. one of the things we, we try to do is not cake people with makeup, but just do kind of light layers so that way their actual skin tone does shine through a little bit. If you've ever gone to a funeral and maybe you've seen someone in the casket who has caked with makeup, they don't really look like themselves. So one of our goals is to tone that down a little bit so they do. Question from Lala. Approximately how much does a mortician make? The minimum and the maximum. I really couldn't say what the minimum and maximum are. The average I've read in the country is about $65,000 a year. And talking to my other friends and colleagues, that seems to be about the average from my area as well. Opia Dana, can you get half your body cremated and the- Hell no, bro. Are you serious? Chat, you're hitting Pog, dude? He's literally handling your dad's dick, okay? For a living. That sucks. He needs to be paid way more, dude. Are you kidding me? God damn. Chat's like, Pog, 65 grand. That's a lot of money. No, motherfucker. Slide. Go on Indeed right now. And fucking slide, homie. Pog, my current allowance from my father is only... $400 a week. Poggers, that would be so sick if I made $65,000. Like, dude, he's literally sucking out people's shit out of their asses for a living, dude. He deserves way more than $65,000. The other half buried. Do morticians do that? Asking for a friend. I have never done that, and I've never had anybody ask. I guess I could see it happening if you really wanted to. You would have to have a disposition permit that would have cremation and burial. And I guess we'd probably have to sign a waiver to uh, cut someone in half. But maybe the bigger question would be, what half are you gonna cremate and what half do you bury? <laughs> this is a question from That Doodle Bunny. How do morticians handle their jobs without becoming emotional wrecks? That is a good question. Most morticians I know are pretty normal people. There are times where it's emotional. So you do feel it and there are maybe days you come home where you just feel done and you don't want to work or maybe do what you're doing anymore. But I think the fact that you can actually help people on, on my side of the desk, on this side of things, there are things that you can do that maybe nobody else can do. You can provide a chance for a, a mother to see her son one more time. It's those kind of things that keep you going. I mean, he's fucking right, dude. Holy shit. Now I feel so bad I called him creepy. He, he does seem like a very nice guy. It's just there's something very unsettling about a person who loves what they do. It seems like when, you know, what they do is literally handling dead people. Like, it's crazy.
I'm sure I'm sure most morticians are conflicted with that reality too where it's like I don't know how to describe it. Nah, yeah, you should. That was weird. Man, shut the fuck up. I apologize for nothing. How about that? I take it back, bitch. It's weird. Yes, Vagina Dentata was the mortician chatter. Nice, dude. Fucking 23-month Andy Burke the Jerk over here. Yeah, her name was Vagina Dentata in the chat. Going in those hard times. This question is from Not Waving. How do you dress the deceased? I have theories. Well, I would love to hear what your theories are, but really it's fairly simple. You're just gonna work their arms through just like you dress a, a baby, maybe. Oftentimes, if we have someone maybe very large that we can't move very well, or maybe someone who has outgrown their clothes or maybe their clothes are too big, we'll oftentimes make cuts down the back and simply drape it over the front and tuck it under the back, maybe sew it in a couple places, so that way it sits right on the person and doesn't look like a like an overlarge tent or squeeze them into their clothes like a sausage. This is a question from- I'm dating a mortician? <sighs> Fucking flex, dude. All right, dude. Get that shit out of here, dude, okay? Oh, look at me, bro. I'm fucking dating, dude. Look at me. I got a fucking girlfriend. Pog. Just kidding. Um, she says you have to realize that it's not your grief and that you're helping others grieve. Oh, that's still kind of interesting. My dad was a mortician's apprentice for a while. He said the worst ones were children. Yeah, that's got to fucking break you, dude. From Trap Jason. Why don't we bury people vertically instead of horizontally? They are already dead, so why does it matter? we could save so much space? That is a great question. I think a lot of it has to do with practicality. So if you were to bury someone vertically, you'd have to dig a pretty deep hole and it would have to be pretty narrow. You can imagine how tough it would be for, let's say six people to carry a casket to the graveside and then turn it up on its end and drop grandma down the hole. <laughs> you might need it. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of cool. <laughs> That's so stupid. All right, time to drop grandma in the hole. I kind of want that now. <laughs> like a seatbelt of some kind. Question from Crowbar Jones. What does a mortician do if there are artificial nails on a corpse? Keep them? Take them off? Asking for a friend. What? I hope you don't mean keep them by keeping a collection, <laughs> but, but if you mean keeping them on, um, more often than not, I will. Typically the artificial nails, look nice, clean, and of course your nails underneath are pretty rough. If they have them on, I usually keep them. Other things that people might be concerned about removing, piercings, they almost always stay. If it's a, an ear piercing and they have their earrings in, maybe we'll take the earrings out, clean them up a little bit. Other body piercings, I always leave them in. This is a question from Melody Jackson. He's a cool mortician, dude. Isn't your grandma kicking it behind you? No, she left already, but uh, the joke was just, you know, in general, yo, this guy has a cup full of people's nails 100%. <laughs> oh, why am I burping so much? I'm sorry. Do morticians take makeup classes when getting their certifications? Yes, we do. I have a four year degree. I mean, at my college, we took courses on uh, what they call restorative art. So this would include things like makeup and coloring, but it would also include things like putting people back together after accidents, sculpting an ear if someone has lost an ear. Lip boy. Do morticians also give haircuts? Anyone know one that can do a nice fade? Yeah, lip boy, I do give haircuts every so often, usually only to men, and usually only if, if it's something minor. If someone does need to get their hair done, we'll actually usually call a hairdresser in. It's fairly simple, because really- Shut the fuck up, dude, how do you- Okay, bro, I'm a hairdresser? If a mortician is calling me to be like, hey, uh, can you cut this dead person? I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Are you fucking insane? Absolutely not, motherfucker. No way, dude. What the fuck? I feel like that's an entirely separate league. You know what I mean? You're... It probably pays real good. Well, no, it doesn't. You know why we know it doesn't? Because this motherfucker makes 65 grand a year, dude. It's so much money. Wait, you guys think it's, it's, uh, why would cutting a dead person's hair be so much money if morticians are only getting paid like 65K just to do what they're doing?
My dad is a master barber for 25 years. Dude, I feel like everyone's dad does some shit, dude. I don't know if it's real or not anymore. I'm at 20k in Oklahoma and I live like a king. 65k would be god level worthy of touching dead dad dick. You're only working with the, the front and the sides of the head. This is a question from- Your ridge is showing? No, you, you're failing to recognize that I am saying that $65,000 for a job as gruesome as working on dead people for a living is not enough. Also, $65,000 is not a lot of money in California, especially in Los Angeles. Chad is saying only, but like 65K isn't much in the grand scheme of things. You make 2X that much a month. Well... I don't know why people think that like I'm I'm talking specifically about what this person is uh making as like if you make sixty five thousand dollars you're not making enough you fucking poor. I'm saying sixty five thousand dollars is not a lot in certain areas, but it's certainly not a lot for dealing with dead dad dick, okay? Veronica, say a body gets exhumed after two years. What should be the state of the body to be expected to be? That's one of the interesting things about my job is that I never actually know what happens after burial. If we had an exhumation, um, you actually have to have a court order to open the vault and open the casket. I've heard of cases where they've opened the casket and the body looks more or less unchanged. And this was maybe 50 years after the fact. This is a question from Jonathan Cowip. Monty Wait, Python. What? After two years, what should be the state of the body to be expected to be? That's one of the interesting things about my job is that I never actually know what happens after burial. If we had an exhumation, um, you actually have to have a court order to open the vault and open the casket. I've heard of cases where they have opened the casket and the body looks more or less unchanged. And this was maybe 50 years after the fact. This is a what the fuck? Bro, the embalming is like OP like that. This guy also went to a four year program for this and it's a highly specialized skill, arguably a dead person doctor. Chat's being weird, 65K is not a lot. That's, thank you. That is precisely my point. Like, I have exhumed bodies at work. I know what they look like. Oh God. Question from Jonathan Cowip. Monty Python's Always Look on the Bright Side of Life is the nation's number one funeral song. What's the oddest funeral music you've ever heard? I haven't heard too many strange funeral songs myself, but I do have this dream. I, I have a friend and I told him if he passes away before I do, I'd really like to sing On Eagle's Wings, but like the Swedish chef from the Muppets. It would sound like- Okay, he's fucking weird, dude. This. You had real initiative to lead for a burden a city for life. <laughs> and that's it. That's all your questions. Okay, that's some fucking mortician shit right there. Honestly, Keeps her like only when you're a fucking, only when you're a mortician do you and your friends pal around about who's going to fucking die first and what you're going to do at their funeral. Writing itself to counter my commands. This has something to do with computers. Hack them all. Hi, I'm Sammy Kamkar. Sammy is the co-founder of OpenPath Security and a computer hacker. I'm back to talk about more hacking scenes in TV shows and movies. Breaking into a government system, The X-Files. This has something to do with computers, with the internet. Actually, the ARPANET. You can access it through the internet. Though. I want to believe but this clip isn't too realistic. ARPANET is essentially what the internet came from. DARPA, the US government agency, created ARPANET, and that bubbled into the internet and became publicly available. When the X-Files came out, ARPANET was no longer in existence. Isn't this something you could, I mean, how do you say it, hack into? I'm sorry, I think this is the end of the line. How you say, that's what she says. She says, how you say hack. <laughs> how do you say it, hack into? To be fair, back then, like, People didn't know what hacking is. You know what I mean? That's like X-Files 
is old. Like, that's old, old, you know? I'm old enough to know that, like, there was a time when, like, hacking wasn't fucking commonplace. But how you say is what you say in other languages when you don't know, right? What did you do? Oh, it's a government system. I know a couple of login out tricks with VMS version 5. If you're using a password that you know, then I don't really consider that hacking. What is that? <laughs> it's an encrypted file. Why would your three-year-old have an encrypted file in a secret defense department database? Can you decode it? There's another issue here in that they find a file that's encrypted. That by itself is not too unrealistic. They're showing the file in ASCII format. Can you print it out for me? But when you print it out, that's going to be <laughs> useless information. <laughs> Can you print out this ASCII? What the fuck? Yo, wait, I want to I want to post this. I want to post this ASCII cock on my wall. Can you print it out for me? And that's because many of the characters that would be in an encrypted file are not visible in an ASCII format. So you end up with things like periods, which- Even I know that's bad, dude. What the fuck, and I'm 29 years old. Oh, dude. Oh, no. It may or may not be a period, or it could be a totally different uh, character or bike. So your ex-boyfriend is into computers. I would totally say that. Wait, your boyfriend's into computers? I should meet him. <laughs> Locking down a system, Jurassic Park. Chat's laughing as if people don't mail links on uh, letters. Yeah, but they do it as a meme. I don't think they have any expectation that I'm actually going to fucking click on it. Oh my god, look how old the cameras are. In this clip, it looks like Newman, you know who I mean, Newman. is kind of running around activating or deactivating certain types of locks. But at some point, someone else tries to run a command like access grid, and that causes an access denied. But then he gets a series of messages. So this doesn't look too realistic, just in the fact that he's getting access denied messages without a password. And he's also then getting a message in a loop, which is just less likely to happen in a realistic scenario. This reminds me of some of the clips that we saw in the first technique critique when we were seeing really just a lot of pop-ups that would occur. Stop the Dude, what the fuck is up with like... What is up with every fucking like leftist leader embalming themselves, dude? Okay. I know that Lenin has the embalming or whatever, and because I know from The Simpsons, right? But I didn't fucking realize that Stalin also had one, and that they actually uh, removed it as a part of as a part of de-Stalinization. Ho Chi Minh has one too, and so does Mao Zedong. No, but these are... No, 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 no. Embalming is something that happens regularly to everyone. But being in a fucking glass case for all to see... Well, that's crazy. You saw Mao's... But you saw Mao's in person? Really? Yeah, it's so that he can fucking break through the glass and come back to life and restore communism. Pop-ups. And a lot of videos, typically, that will hackers will put onto devices. <laughs> That's not something we generally see in the real world. It's a Unix system. It's all the files of the whole park. The girl gets to the computer and says it's a Unix system. It doesn't look like a Unix system, which is typically a terminal or a console window but it actually is Unix. It tells you everything. I had to find the right file. The 3D interface that she's using is a legitimate software that a company called SGI made many years ago. It's not something anyone actually uses. It was really just a proof of concept of using a 3D file system. The reason no one would ever use it is because it takes forever to navigate a 3D system when you're just trying to find a file. I hate this hacker crap. Decrypting a file, the code. There might be an error in the video compression. Can you fix that? Maybe, but I would need to get online. <laughs> Wait, where?
Where is this? Where is this guy from? What what was he in? What did I see him? In? Is it the office? Oh my God, it's the office. Oh my God, it's the office. Here we see Jesse taking a corrupted video file and uh, for a moment we see him start running a program called FFmpeg and he essentially tries to remove corruption from this video file and that's totally reasonable. Is that not BJ Novak? FFmpeg is meant for all sorts of modifications or alterations to video images. Wait, hold on. Bro, are you sure? Like, are you actually sure? Bro, he's in succession, Jesse Banks. <laughs> Uh, love child of BG Novak and Jake Gyllenhaal. You're thinking of Greg's Anatomy, but not him. He's in succession. I don't, I'm not thinking of Greg's Anatomy. I've never seen that. He does kind of look like soda popping too. <laughs> Motherfuckers at Greg's Anatomy. <laughs> Greg's Anatomy, dude. Okay, what's this guy's name? Jesse what? Jesse, what? Ashley Zuckerman? Oh my God, he literally looks like BJ Novak. Okay, you guys are ridiculous, dude. He does look like him. Here we see Jesse taking a corrupted video file and uh, for a moment we see him start running a program called FFmpeg and he essentially tries to remove corruption from this video file and that's totally reasonable. I mean, is that hacking though? I, I don't... FFmpeg is meant for all sorts of modifications or alterations to video, images, and audio. So for example, if you have something that's corrupt, you could take all the frames that are not corrupt Extract that. Did I tell you guys? Someone said Eva Elfie in the chat. You know, Eva Elfie responded to my DM like months later. And then reconstruct all of those frames into a single video. And then I DM'd her again and then she never responded. There was a part that was inaccurate in where we saw the red, green, and blue channels all visually come up. While that would be possible to do FFmpeg, the tool itself is a terminal-based tool. So it's all text-based, despite operating on video, image, and audio. Can you fix that? Maybe, but I would need to get online. He asked to go online, but if he already has that FFmpeg tool downloaded to his machine, there's actually no reason for him to go online. So who knows what he was actually doing. Sometimes you do hear of hackers getting sentenced uh, not to use computers or be on the internet. Unfortunately, that occurred to me earlier in my life for several years. I don't know if we want to go into it. <laughs> now I'm allowed to be on the internet. <laughs> what did he do? What did he do? Wait, how can you even stop that from happening? If he's literally a fucking... If he's literally a hacker, then like, who's going to find out? Like if he's just like, you know, he hacked the American oil line. What? <laughs> he watched, he watched a, he watched a porn on his dad's laptop. <laughs> Is he the MySpace worm guy? Sammy also known as JS space here as a cross site scripting worm. The worm itself was relatively harmless. It carried a payload that would display the string, but most of all, Sammy is my hero on a victim's MySpace profile page, as well as send Sammy a friend request. When a user viewed that profile page, the payload would then replicate and planted their own profile page, continuing distributing the worm. He was raided by the Secret Service and Electronic Crimes Task Force. With only one computer and no access to the internet. What? That sucks, dude.
hardware hacking, firewall. I need my daughter's MP3 player. He uses a hard drive. Here we see Jack Stanfield using his daughter's iPod to store data while under duress in a kidnapping situation. This is the scanner head from the fax machine. Yeah. And you'll capture the images of the account numbers off the server screen and transfer them to this. That's totally realistic. If you think. Shut the fuck up. She was on a Russian girl's Twitch channel. Oh my god, dude. Casting for streaming with Ava Elfie? Wait, what? Yo, Russian Twitch is crazy, dude. Like, American Twitch? American Twitch, you're out here, like, getting caught for a titty, right? Like, oh shit, you saw a titty, boom, roasted, done. Russian Twitch, they're literally like, who out of my fans wants to fuck Ava Elfie for next video? And, like, there is just no moderation whatsoever, which I, I don't hate. Great for them. Who wants fuck Eva Elfie in next video? <laughs> this guy, apparently, he's very excited about it. Think about an mp3 it's just a digital format of audio and audio is really just a, an analog signal so you can convert that into a digital format and just like you can convert any other data into some digital format but they're still just images what are you going to do with them I use an ocr program to convert it to data that the computer can use he also mentioned loki salty ha 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 wait why would i be salty i'm literally on board with like fucking hot tub streamers and shit i think hot tub streamers are a completely uh, a problem, a manufactured problem blown way out of proportion. Using OCR, which is object character recognition. So if I were to take a screenshot of a bank account, it's an image, there's not actually text in it, even though I can read the text, OCR software would then convert that and extract all of the text from it without me having to type it in manually. 10,000 songs, 10,000 account codes, it doesn't know the difference. The only thing he doesn't go over here is how he converts the images from the scanner into the MP3s. You do need some conversion to occur. So that needs to be a computer or a microcontroller or something. It should work. Hacking a smart fridge, Silicon Valley. Hello, my co-friend. Hello? Huh. Suck it, Jian Yang. Mm. Ah, huh. You attack and destroy my refrigerator? And you misspell my name. Essentially, smart fridges themselves are really just computers. They're running some operating system, maybe a stripped down version of Linux. I was able to brute force the backdoor password to that Chrome piece of shit in under 12 hours. What Guilfoyle is saying is that he was able to brute force the password. All that means is he went through millions and millions of passwords trying to authenticate through some mechanism that the fridge exposed. Maybe it's connected to the Wi-Fi network and it has a port open that you can then connect to. That is a possible scenario. A backdoor is a way to log in or authenticate into a system without going through the traditional mechanism. So Why are the only women you talk about porn stars? Well, I talk about your mom too. She's not a porn star. He is a porn star in the bedroom, though. Fucking got him. Oh, God. Moment of silence for the Shatter, who is now dead. I pray for you, Shatter. I'm sorry that I had to roll you like that. So maybe a website has a username and password field. A backdoor would be a special URL that you wouldn't need to enter any username or password. But I added a little visual flair. Huh, suck it. Hacking an ATM pin. Terminator 2. Judgment Day. Please insert your stolen card now. They insert a device that looks like a credit card tied to a computer with a ribbon cable, and it looks to do some type of brute force of the pin code. Go baby, go baby, go baby. Right. Yes! Easy money. Some of this could be possible. The problem is the pin code has nothing to do with the data on the credit card nor is it ever inserted within the credit card slot. Those are two independent systems. What they're doing here with the PIN just isn't talking to the right system. So they'd have to be plugged into something else in order to even attempt an attack like this. Who'd you learn this stuff from anyway? From my mom. Destroying a hard drive, the core. This is the FBI, we have a warrant. Shit. In this scene, the main character uh. is trying to wipe, delete, purge any data he can <laughs> from a number of different data storage types. 
He takes some pretty big magnets and he goes over what I assume are hard drives, which would work for traditional spinning platter hard drives that would erase a lot of the data as the data is kept in magnetic fields. If I had to destroy something like a traditional spinning hard drive, then I probably would do something similar by using magnets. But ideally, I would also want to open it after the fact and then crush it into bits. The more uh, small pieces you have, the less data someone will be able to extract and be able to put them together. He also throws some CDs or DVDs into a microwave. The data there is actually stored within the polycarbonate. So if he had a sufficient time to melt it, he could make it disappear, but it just depends on that amount of time. Hurt. He also deleted some data just using software. Now, a quick software delete in the period of time he had, which was only a few seconds, while that appears to delete the files, it actually doesn't delete the data. All it does is tell your hard drive or your computer that the data in this sector is now free. In order to actually delete data from a drive, you actually need to overwrite that data. And typically, you'll want to overwrite it several times. Then, for a safe measure, hit it with a hammer a bunch of times. I know these look like computers. <laughs> Totally not. Faraday cage, enemy of the state. This is where I work, completely secure. Copper wire mesh keeps the radio signals out. He says this uh, copper wire cage or a Faraday cage keeps radio signals out. Normally that is true. When you have a conductive mesh or a metallic mesh, the only thing that can penetrate that mesh are wavelengths that are essentially smaller than the mesh itself, so the holes themselves. But in this case, there's a lot of radio frequency that can fit in that wavelength. So really, even something like five gigahertz Wi-Fi would be able to penetrate that mesh. If the mesh were smaller, then it would be able to block a lot more radio frequency. Hate to see the chicken that lives in this coop. Acoustic analysis, eagle Go. eye. Sir, all the threats we've been tracking chatter all of it. In this scene, a couple. Can't believe this fucking loser doesn't know about 5G uh, waves being blocked out by Shungite, dude. Like, imagine calling yourself a hacker and then not knowing how. Shug Knight literally blocks 5G coronavirus wave. A couple of things are happening. There is a voice over IP phone that they ultimately disconnect to prevent someone from snooping or enabling the microphone. It shows that the camera is essentially able to read lips. Really creative and absolutely doable with software today. What they didn't expect, and which is really creative, is they're actually using acoustic analysis to look at vibrations off the coffee cup that was there. So when you're speaking or when someone's speaking, they are moving air molecules, and that's going at a certain frequency based off the frequency of their sound. When that hits something like the drink, you're actually able to convert that physical change of that liquid back into audio because essentially it's moving at the frequency of sound. And if you can visually see that, you can then convert that visual frequency back into the frequency of sound and hear it. So it's actually very creative, but it is doable. Denial of service attack. Ralph breaks the internet. Scanning for insecurities. Insecurity detected. In this clip, we see some sort of malicious system that is finding this insecurity in Ralph. And they're essentially duplicating Ralph and duplicating this insecurity, which then takes over uh, all sorts of websites, stops. It starts interfering with people's web browsers. The internet is under assault as a massive. He's like, this is similar to my Sammy virus. Denial of service attack crashes servers across the web. Denial of service typically isn't going to do something manipulative like alter your web browser or alter a video feed. Instead, its goal is one simple thing, and that's to bring a system down. While this is uh, pretty unrealistic, I think we can give Ralph a pass here, uh, just for his insecurity. <laughs> Hijacking a TV channel, V for Vendetta. Dad, what's wrong with the telly? Good evening. In this scene, we see someone essentially taking over a TV station. In Sammy virus, lol. This is what I was talking about. The Sammy computer script worm, whatever the fuck. In this case, I don't consider this hacking because they essentially already have the capability. They're in the station 
and they have the ability to already override the video that's been playing right now. What makes it a little less unlikely is that they're also taking over billboards. And often those are coming off a separate feed off uh, some pre-recorded video. Granted, those could be based off of live video as well. In Tim Burton's Batman, we do see something similar where a live newscast is taken over by the Joker. Now, that is actually a lot more realistic and is And then he says, I'm the Joker, baby. The Joker. Actual hack because often live broadcasts are being aired over radio. So if someone can intercept, and by intercept, I just mean send a stronger signal, then they can actually override that signal if they can hit the receiver and take over that. So that is something that can happen and has happened in the past. You don't look happy. He's been using Brand X. Stock market hack. Who am I? In this clip, they're on the roof of what appears to be a stock exchange, and they're somehow connecting to the network. Uh, this by itself is gonna be a little challenging because there are many different networks, and just being on the roof is typically not enough to jump on the network. We do see them run something called bash, buffer overflow.sh, and some number. And buffer overflow is a common technique to exploit various types of software by overflowing their memory so much that you get to a point in memory that you can tell the processor where to run code. And you can then point that back to the original memory you overflowed, and that's now your code. So it's a way to take over a computer just by inputting some data. What they're demonstrating is that they were able to connect to and then run their own code and run their own instructions. We're also seeing essentially video of a graph, and that chart is probably going to be extracted from some other location, maybe from a website um, or from some other feed. So uh, it might be possible, but it's going to be challenging to do this. Yeah! Autonomous vehicle exploitation. Fate of the furious. There's over a thousand of them. Hack them all. In this clip, we see a bunch of cars getting hacked and taken over. Some of this could be possible, and there's a pretty incredible demonstration of this type of attack where they were able to take a Jeep that was driving on the road uh, with someone from Wired inside, and they were able to take that car over. They first started just uh, controlling the windshield wipers, uh, adjusting the radio, and then actually started messing with the controls of the vehicle, like the throttle. And that's because some vehicles do have these components. Okay, that's terrifying, dude. Computerized. However, what they're showing here where they're just arbitrarily choosing distracted nurse. What? Italian hospital apologized for lapse on a busy day, but says the young woman has shown no adverse reaction to the overdose of the Pfizer vaccine. <laughs> oh no. Oh Jesus Christ, dude. Stop. God damn, bro. She's Bro, if nothing happens, I would keep, tr I would try to keep track of her, dude. If nothing happens to her, we're all good, boys. Cars to take over is really unlikely because it's a lot of effort and it's typically a targeted attack. You have to really know the vehicle that you are trying to get to first. You see a bunch of cars that are actually parked and they start driving. Well, that's not gonna happen if you have something like an e-brake. As far as I know, today there aren't many vehicles with a computerized e-brake. So we're just seeing way too many vehicles doing way too many things they simply don't have the capability to do. I'd buckle up if I were you. Credential hack. Mission impossible, ghost protocol. In this scene, we see Ethan Hunt going into a government building. He reveals his credentials and the person working behind the desk starts scanning the credentials. He looks at kind of what percentage of this hacking uh, is being done. This seems pretty unlikely for a couple of reasons. For one, when you're talking about a credential uh, or authorization system, it's likely not gonna be on some wireless network. Even if you do have a wireless network in a government building, it's again, likely not tied to a security checkpoint. Another problem here is that we see a percentage of completion. You almost never have percentages when you're talking about hacking. It's either you have found a mechanism to get in or, or you haven't. So the loading bar in hacking scenes is usually not very accurate. Love your disguise, by the way. Max Booth. Mr. Robot. 
everything stall. In this scene, we see Darlene take a little magnetic reed head and take a hotel card and scan it and then store it into a device called MagSpoof. And then she goes up to the hotel room and she essentially hits play, which either replays that or it brute forces the code. And that unlocks the door. And that is something that can absolutely occur. MagSpoof is a device I personally created and it's designed to essentially allow to perform penetration. What the fuck is... It's like, oh, I, I made one of these, dude. Penetration testing around different types of mag stripes primarily around credit cards. The device itself is an electromagnet. And what all that means is it's able to create a magnetic- Bro, I thought this guy was white hat, dude. What's going on? Why is he making like spoofed credit cards machines? Mr. Robot is a mild and most accurate depiction of actual hacking and entertainment, like consistently every single representation of it. It was very, very, very close to IRL. Scary as fuck. Field, both north and south. The writers of Mr. Robot were really creative here and asked if this were possible on hotel mag stripes. And it's entirely possible. And they actually came up with the idea of taking that same device and using it here in a hotel to brute force through various numeric codes for a room just by having somebody else's room card. And that's a totally feasible scenario. Hacking at an Apple store. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. No. I was trying to hide something. Can I help you guys with anything? Oh no, my fiance was just helping me with some honeymoon destinations. It seems that really what they're trying to do is just hide who they are. Are <laughs> and what they're doing. So they're going to an Apple store so they can take the IP address of the Apple store rather than doing it say from their home or office or Captain America uh, network. How much time will we have? Uh, about nine minutes from. No. Generally, you wouldn't want to do it in an Apple store. For one, they're going to have a lot of cameras. So all they have to do is correlate the time, the computer, and then look at the video feed, and they might be able to capture who was there. Oh, well, maybe we can find out where it came from. Wait, what's a red hat hacker? Did you just make that up? I thought it was only like white hat and, and, and black hat. As in, one is bad, and then the other is like, lol, red hat is Linux? This fucking guy literally said... Uh, you know, sometimes hackers go from, like, white hats to red hats and black hats. Like, what's a gray hat? Red hat hackers are Linux? There was an art prank done many years ago at an Apple store in New York. The creator, Kyle, ended up... Wait, what's, what's, a, what's a gray hat? Like, like where sometimes you're good, or I guess sometimes you're working for companies and other times you're working against them and the government? Like, is that what that means? Morally gray hackers? Ended up getting the Secret Service sent to his house. So you probably don't want to try this. Congratulations, where are you guys thinking about going? And what kind of hacker am I when I like bypass firewalls? Or paywalls, sorry, not firewalls. I can't bypass firewalls. <laughs> it's like with karate belts where your color changes after training. New Jersey. If you did want to actually perform attacks and hide your IP address, it would make more sense to have some sort of device, say a Raspberry Pi computer, I'm a purple to a solar hacker, panel, dude. throw it on top of a store, and then connect to that. So that is now connecting to the free Wi-Fi of somewhere nearby. And now you're sort of proxied. There's no video of you. You're not at the store, but you're taking advantage of their IP address. And now it's going to be much harder to link back to you. The person who developed this is slightly smarter than me. Slightly. Fishing attack, Ocean's 8. You're a script kitty. By using already available tools a single click to gain your way, hackers made that script you're already using. I'm not a hacker, dude. I was kidding. I guess technically, am I a script kitty if I'm buying cracked video games? So yeah, technically I am a fucking hacker, dude. I am a script kitty. No, just a pirate. No, that's just piracy. 
It's called being a Turkish teenager, dude. If you're buying crack video games, you're an idiot. Just download them. No, dude. When I'm I, when I was in Turkey, like back in the day, when you couldn't just fucking download.